Hey, so what's going on everyone? Before I get started on today's video, I've had a couple of people ask about why I've only been doing one video a week instead of two. I just want to let everyone know now, everything's fine. I'm good. I'm here. Ta-da. All that good stuff. I am currently in the process of finishing up two books at the same time, and I've got a deadline on an anthology that I agreed to be a part of. So for the time being, some stuff has to give so I can focus on getting my writing stuff done because that's still the number one thing. So for the time being, it's just going to be one video a week. I want to say hopefully in July I will go back to the usual two. So I just wanted to let everyone know now everything's good. Since I've only been doing one video a week, uh, trying to figure out some other stuff to do. And I've noticed it's been a little while since I've done a discussion video. And I know a lot of you have been asking for more discussion videos. I'm just trying to... I want to make sure I don't throw every single discussion video I can do out all at once. Simple as that. So, the book I'm going to be talking about today is my second novella, Dream Awake. So this is my, let's say, I want to say this is my 13th or 14th book overall. It is my fourth fiction work behind Veering Straight Ahead, Three Crowns, The Escape of Ernest Frost, The Nose Dream Awake. It is my second novella behind Three Crowns. And it was my third release in 2018. Dream Awake came out in July 2018. I'm going to be honest, it's got mixed results depending on where you go. If you look at Amazon, it's got nothing but five-star reviews. And if you go on Goodreads, uh, not so much. So, I started working on this particular book in either 2015 or 2016. After finally putting the final touches on Three Crowns, I wanted to try my hand at writing a novel. And I didn't want to do another fantasy or medieval thing like I did with Three Crowns. I wanted to try something else. With Veering Straight Ahead, I did a lot of contemporary stories. Three Crowns is a primary, primarily a fantasy piece. And The Escape of Ernest Frost is a thriller. So I was trying to figure out what could I do that would be good for me to write, but also something I can learn on. And I am a huge fan of the horror genre. If you've noticed, I've done a lot of anthologies in that particular genre. And this was something that was new to the people that followed me because prior to this, Prior to Dream Away coming out, most of my releases were poetry books, and this was something that, this is a genre I'm a huge fan of. It's something I read a lot of when I'm just reading on my own time. So I thought, I'm going to try writing a horror novel. And one of the things that I've noticed just from being a fan you always have a huge build-up leading to the main plot of the story. And I wanted to do something a little different. My idea was I wanted to just hit the ground running. So Dream Awake, I wrote entirely in a first-person perspective. So my main character doesn't really have a name. It's just the main character. So the main character is constantly having nightmares about someone coming after them while they're asleep. And at the end of the first chapter, the person who's coming after our main character is at a coffee shop with the main character. And the person from the nightmares comes up to the main character and says, you know who I am. I'm the person that's been coming after you in your dreams. I'm about to start coming after you in this world as well. So that was my idea. I just wanted to hit the ground running. I wanted to, 
add some suspense. I wanted something that would show why this person needs to be afraid. So now that I have that idea, it was, okay, now I've got to get this into a novel format. And I wrote, at the time, the first three chapters. At that time, I think I had about 12,000 words for the novel. And I went back and reread it, and I was bored out of my mind. I sent it to a friend of mine that I trust, and I said, what's something I can do here? Because if I'm getting bored reading this, I know my readers are going to get bored reading this. Not only that, but this is my first time writing horror, and if I want to get the horror audience to check out my stuff, I need to be able to get them interested, and I'm not going to win anyone over with this. So she asked me to send her the stuff. So I said, all right, cool. So I sent her the first three chapters and she pretty much confirmed what I already said, which was that it was boring. Like, yeah, but I need to save particular parts for buildups throughout the story. And I really want to write this, but at the same time, now that I'm working on it, I don't think I can make this a novel. But... I want to continue writing it because I think I've got a really cool idea for my first foray into the genre. And at this time, Three Crowns had just come out. So even though now Three Crowns is one of my best-selling books, at that time there were a couple of people that didn't want to pick up Three Crowns because they didn't know me for writing fantasy. They knew me for writing poetry. So Three Crowns at first wasn't really a huge seller. It was people that knew me were buying it and people that were fans of the fantasy genre were finding it on the Kindle. So my friend responded, she said, you did just put out a novella. Did you consider turning this story into a novella? I was like, I guess I can do that. And she said, try trimming some of this up and see what you can come up with. So I went back and I took out the stuff that was making me feel bored reading this. I was like, all right, now that I've got the fat already trimmed out, I went from having about 12,000 words to having a little over 5,000 words. Great, this is going to be a challenge. So I started writing an outline on where I wanted each thing to go and I just went from there. I was like, all right, maybe I can try something. So I went back in the first three chapters were essentially turned into pieces of three chapters, but not complete chapters. And that's not normally how I write. With my fiction stuff, I treat each chapter like a short story. And I try to make sure that there's something complete there, but enough to make you want to continue reading it once you are finished with that chapter. So I thought, okay, the first chapter I know my beginning, I know my end, I need to put some more stuff in there. I couldn't add dialogue because I've got the main character is someone who's a bit of a loner. This person's not getting any sleep, so they're stopping by a coffee shop on the way to work. So there's no one to really talk to. It's like, all right, what can I do to get this person to talk a little bit more leading up to them going into the coffee shop? And then I looked back and I realized I bet this person just wakes up in a cold sweat. I don't have anything mentioning this is a recurring thing. So like, all right, I've got something here. So I went back and I rewrote the first chapter. 
from scratch. And I got what I felt was a really solid first chapter. Around this time, though, even though I now know Dream Awake is going to be a novella instead of a novel, there's a few issues here. One, I still want to try my hand at a novel. And I think I finally came up with the idea, which ended up becoming The Escape of Ernest Frost. By the way, I will be doing a discussion video on that at some point in the future, but this one is for Dream Awake. The other issue was, at the time, this book didn't have a title. It was just Dreams. That was what it was on the folder on my computer, was Dreams. And the notebook where I was like leaving notes when I wasn't in front of my computer just said the dream story. So I don't know if this person is going to be watching this. I've not really talked to this person in years. I've only know the person here and there briefly. But I got to give a shout out to this person I met a while back named Shane. And... He saw me putting some notes in my notebook. He said, hey, what you doing? I'm putting together a book and I need something to add. I need a title for this thing. And he asked me what the story was about. I told him, he said, dude, Dream Awake. You should name it Dream Awake. So... I went with it. I was like, all right, cool. And whenever it comes out, I'll give you a shout out. So it's a few years late, but Shane, here's your shout out, man. And with this, I now have a title. I now have a first chapter. And I already knew from the beginning I wanted to leave a somewhat ambiguous ending. So now I have a title. First chapter is now done. That being said, though, I really wanted to do the novel. So I start working on what becomes The Escape of Ernest Frost. And every so often I would take a break from The Escape of Ernest Frost to add more to Dream Awake. And one of the things that I've been asked before was how is it that there's such a small gap between The Escape of Ernest Frost and Dream Awake? For those that are new to following me, The Escape of Ernest Frost came out in April 2018 and Dream Awake came out in July 2018. So that's a three month gap. And the truth is, I was working on both of them at the same time, but since I already knew that Dream Awake was going to be a novella instead of a novel, the word count didn't need to be as high. And even though I had plenty of ideas, when I did try to expand more, I felt like I was just adding fat to a story that didn't need it. So, the story got trimmed quite a bit during my time working on Escape of Burmese Frost. And when the time came, like, I was already working on some stuff. I was trying to get these two books done. This was also around the time that I had made the announcement that Three Crowns was going to be the last book I released under my real name, Luke Wood, and that the follow-up, The Paradox Complex, was going to be my first book written as C.L. Williams, and that was going to be the name I was going to be using moving forward. I also had decided that if I was going to use a new pen name, I wanted people to know from the get-go that I wanted to do multi-genre. The whole reason that the name is Writer434 and not Poet434 is because I always knew from writing my first book of poetry that I would eventually write other stuff. So when that time came, I wanted people to know that I was multi-genre. That's why there's such a small gap between the Paradox Complex to The Escape of Ernest Frost to Dream Awake to The Next Step. 
the gap between Dream Awake and the next step is actually the largest gap out of my 2018 releases with this coming out in July and that coming out in October. So that was another reason. I was working on both books at the same time and I knew I wanted to have short gaps between books for the short run because I wanted people to know I am not just a person that writes poetry. I write other forms of prose. I'm doing other things in fiction. And that's what I wanted to do. So... Around the time I finished up writing The Escape of Ernest Frost, I finished up Dream Awake. And around this time was when The Paradox Complex came out. So now The Paradox Complex is out and I'm like, all right, I'm finished with everything I need for The Escape of Ernest Frost. Let me go ahead and start formatting Dream Awake while I'm promoting The Paradox Complex. And when I was done with that, I noticed this book's a little bit thinner than Three Crowns. So what can I do to put a few more pages on this because I needed to make sure this book had a spine. So I gave everyone an incentive if you review the escape of Ernest Frost for the Paradox Complex, I would put your name in Dream Awake. So that's everyone that helped me promote those two books. So there's a shout out to everyone. And then there's everyone that I had worked with over the years. I want to give everyone as much of a shout out as I could. When Dream Week was ready. So one of the other reasons behind having a short gap with The Escape of Ernest Frost and Dream Week wasn't just me wanting to show off that I could do other things. 2018 was the first year I got accepted to sell my books at conventions and festivals. And my first conventions were in August. So this had to be done. So yeah, this had to be done. And for the most part, I feel like I got everything I needed to in time for August. This came out in July. And similar to Three Crowns, sales were kind of slow at first, which is understandable. I'm writing in a genre that has a strong following and I kind of had to prove myself a little bit. And at the time, I hadn't. I was just, hey, I'm going to try something. And that's essentially what I was doing. I was throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks. I'm going to be honest about it. But in the long run, this was probably the first book that I did where I could show that I could do stuff in the horror genre. And this is also one of the things that led to me working in other anthologies, because if you've noticed, most of the anthologies I'm in are in the horror genre. It's essentially become the number two thing I write is poetry. And part of it starts off with this book. And I've noticed recently that a lot of people have been Showing some interest in this book again. So I got to give a little bit of a heads up to some of the authors that I know that also watch some of my videos. Some of my books, straight out the gate, eh, and then they start catching, catching a following later on. 
So for some of you out there, if you're not seeing what you were hoping in the short run, don't just give up on it. Don't just take this and go, nah, whatever, and then go on to your next project. You'd be surprised how many people are going to show interest in your back catalog as, your, as time progresses. And I've been noticing that with Dream Awake. So to any authors out there, embrace your back catalog. So one of the other things too that I have noticed with Dream Awake was when I first started doing conventions, this one, because I was doing a bundle sale between this, The Escape of Ernest Frost and Three Crowns, people were buying it because of that. But overall, that was kind of what started some of the slower sales. But again, there is a market and there is a following for the horror genre. And after I did multiple anthology appearances, people went back and was checking some of the other stuff I've done. Dream Awake being one of them. So I mentioned, spoiler alert, there is a bit of an ambiguous ending. Is there a planned sequel? No. I think Hitchcock said it best that in life, you're not always going to get all the answers. And that's how I approached Dream Awake was leave everyone hanging. Did everything get resolved? Did the main character meet their demise? I don't know. And honestly, that's how life is sometimes. You don't always get the answers. But that is going to do it for this video. If you are new to this channel, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up, comment down below. I do my best to comment in a timely manner. I've also got my social media links in the description below. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram. I have a second channel where I read my poetry and short stories. If anyone is interested, I will read the first chapter of Dream Awake on my second channel. So if you want that, comment down below. Let me know if you want that or not. And a while back, I said that if both my channels were part of the partner program, I would do a non-book channel. I'm going to have that as the pinned comment. I am now part of a movie channel with my friends. It is called Let's Watch a Movie. I show off movies I buy. Me and my friends go to the movie theater quite a bit. So we're getting our thoughts on some of the movies that are out there. Uh, we've also got a segment called Let's Watch What, where I make my friends watch some of the worst things I've ever seen made. So check that out too. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. <laughs>